Okay, there we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to <laughs> Coffee and Art Impromptu Rushed and Hurried Friday. <laughs> well, anyway, so I ran down. Uh, well, they, I called yesterday at Books a Million to see if they had put the new magazines out. And they said, no, they won't be out till overnight. I said, okay, I'll call back in the morning. So, because I knew that the new coloring studio, the Somerset Studio coloring uh, magazine slash book, would not, what came out June 1st, okay? So I went down, I said, well, I'm sure they got it in. They got all their new magazines out. So I went down the bookstore and they went, no, no, we don't have it. I went, well, what the? <laughs> Didn't come in. Didn't come in the new magazines. It'll be here next week. I went, well, I don't want it next week. I want it now. I said, I guess I'll have to go to Barnes & Noble tomorrow. Because I'm going to go to Denise's tomorrow. And I go to her Barnes & Noble, which is a real nice Barnes & Noble. So um, I said, well, I'll just get it at Barnes & Noble tomorrow. Now, they, i got to say this. They did have the new Flow magazine in. They have the new Flow magazine. Not the, They have the book, too, the paper book. But they have the new magazine. And I said, well, no. I got I to gotta hold out for this, the coloring studio. So I said, well, let me just run over to Michael's. Let me just run over down to Michael's. Michael's usually does not have the new magazines in first. Usually the bookstores have it because it just came out June 1st, you know. Um, so I went down to Michael's and right there at the checkout counter, there it was. They had like three of them, three of them. So I don't know if they sold them all yesterday. So, yeah. All right. So, I love the first one, which was this one. And I've colored a few things in it. As y'all know, I colored a few things in this. Well, I colored a couple things in it. And apparently, they picked them up, picked them up off of Pinterest. Because two of my, it, my color book pages from the last book are in their Our Faith Pinterest pins. Now, I don't, can't swear to this, but I'm thinking it's because of Julie Topaz that they're in here. Because Julie Topaz, she's the Pinterest queen. And she repins a lot of my stuff. So I'm thinking they found it because Julie Topaz probably repinned it. So I'm going to say it's Julie Topaz. Is fault <laughs> not her fault, but her nice repinning that probably got their attention. I follow them, but I think I think it was Julie Topaz. So the two images here, and they have my name under. That's kind of cool. So I got this one, which I'm going to show you the originals. Hey, Lynn, Army Linda, and this one. Okay, so this one right here is this from the last their last book now this is their first one this is the second one this is only their second issue of the coloring studio right so here's the one this is the one that i colored in the last book and y'all remember there's a video on it so that one is in there right here and then this one was a page a face that i cut out I cut out of the book and we did a poster on it. So this one's a full on white poster. So this is the face. This all right here is the image that I cut out of the book. We added some napkins and stamping and painting and all that. But this right here is the image with the feathers and all that is the image out of the first book. So yay. So I'm just, I'm, I'm saying thanks to Julie Topaz for probably repinning it for me. But anyway, so that was kind of cool to get our favorite Pinterest pins in the, in the book. Okay, so that being said, I have not looked through this book. Other than that one page, I wanted to look it over with you guys. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think so too, Vicki. But I know that um, Julie Topaz is always repinning my stuff. And Julie Topaz has got a huge, huge Pinterest. If y'all don't follow her on, on Pinterest, I mean, she's like the Pinterest queen. So, um, yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to look at it together. And maybe we'll start a page. I'll see how much time we have. Okay, so it's the Coloring Studio, Somerset Studio. Oh, who's ringing my doorbell? Oh, my God. I have no idea. I see no card. It must be a salesperson. Let me look. Ah. 
have no idea who this is. Hang on, guys. Let me go see who's at my door. It was the Jehovah Witnesses, so they come around on Fridays. Okay, so anyway, I just, anyway, all right, so um, we're going to go ahead and look through this. Has, yes, I know, and Hubster's flying in from Texas. Oh, it's been a week. He's been gone for three days, so it's been a little, a little hectic. But I did get my air conditioner serviced yesterday. It needed Freon. And, uh... Okay, so anyway. Catching my breath now. Yeah, no, my packages usually come in the mail. Once in a while I'll get a UPS. But UPS uh, just drops them off. They don't wait for me to come. There was a car in the driveway, so I knew that it wasn't UPS. Oh, honey, if it was UPS, we'd be all over that. Okay, <laughs> so back to the coloring studio. Hey! <laughs> all right, so the beginning has this book belongs to. We're just going to look at it together. Hopefully my camera's situated. And we are recording. <laughs> hey, Galena, anybody else pop it in? Mad Rat, hey, guys, anybody else? That I might have missed. Christy. Thanks guys for popping in. We're looking at the new Somerset. Um, Somerset Studio Coloring Studio. <laughs> it's a second issue. Okay. So then. Yes. We just. We peruse. We peruse the awesomeness. Jean had to have a. She had a doctor appointment. And. Um, Janet's gone shopping. <laughs> There's Eileen. <laughs> I was going to say. Where's our enabler? Ah, 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 the enabler is usually around. Okay, so <clears throat> some birds. We're gonna have to figure out what we want to either color. I won't. I probably won't cut the very first page out that I color, like this one. You know, we we did cut this one out and make a um, poster out of it. I'll end up probably cutting stuff out of it, but not the very first page. You gotta have at least one thing colored, right? So, you know, like we colored this one in this first issue. What else do we color in here? We've colored a couple things. I think I've cut the other ones out, too. I hate to say, but yeah, I cut them out. We color and cut out. There's another face in here. I think we cut that one out, too. So, yeah. But we'll have to try to uh, color something for, for, uh, for Somerset before we start cutting them up. Oh, well, welcome back, Eileen. I just, I ran down to uh, the bookstore. They didn't have it. And I went over to Michael's, and they did have it. So I just got it at Michael's. And then Ustream was, had a problem uh, getting it turned on this morning. Yeah, and Hubster's flying in from Texas. So we got a lot of luck going on. Okay, welcome to the coloring studio. And, and again, this is the first time I've looked at it, too. I'm not going to read it to you guys. We're just going to flip. I'm just trying to make the spine lie flat. You really, to, to make the spine, you should go to the middle of the book and push it open and then work your way out so that the spine is nice and flat. Um, yeah, that's where I got mine. Now, I think book, uh, my Barnes and, um, Barnes and Nobles probably has it, but I'm not going there till tomorrow. I go to the one by Denise's house, and so, um, so I wasn't going to be able to get it till tomorrow. Right, here's a completed project, Seed Pod Riot. So here's a, somebody's already colored this one, and here's the, the seed pods there, so you can see. Awesome! I love, don't you, don't you just love a new color book? I'm still trying to work the spine open, because I want it to be flat when I go to color. Okay. <clears throat> and then, oh, Joanna ba Basford. Look, we have a, uh thing here with her is I guess I don't know I've never seen her before is that her color and fiction like Scotland's Joanna Johanna Basford you know she does the lost ocean which I've done some of those the lost ocean and the uh, what's the other one um, secret garden uh, enchanted forest and then lost ocean was 2015 so I guess that's her right there 
little Scottish color girl. <laughs> a color book maker girl. So then she's got so like a little interview there with her. Awesome, awesome. More more interview with her. And, and so that's worth the price of the book to me. I would love to, you know, have read the, again. This is the first time that I've opened the book and read and looked at it. So they ask her questions like, "What gave you the idea for coloring books for adults?" I'll just I'll just read you the questions. Can you describe your creative process? How long does it take you to complete a drawing? Why do you think so many adults are coloring? Oh, more questions. Why do you think your illustrations in particular appeal to adults? When you color, do you stay within the lines? What inspires you? Why does nature feature so heavily in your in your work? So there's a whole like interview with her in there. Awesome. Um, she has another she has another one coming out. Another book, Vicki S. <clears throat> I'm not sure which book you're talking about, Vicki S. Then here's another completed project where they'll show you. This is one of the things that's different about uh, the coloring studio. If y'all remember when we did the first one, they not only have like completed projects and uh, you know like a sample page done and the other one, but they have lots of tips and stuff. So I'm going to see if they do the same thing in this one. Okay, some houses. Again, this is the kind of stuff I'll end up cutting out. Especially if it's just got text on the back, I'll read the article and then I'll end up cutting these out and use them in an art journal. Oh, Magical Jungle in August. Okay, thank you. Here's an article on the psychology of color. Here's another completed project. And uh, this one was done by Dinah Re Diane Reevely. Okay, she's the one, she did this one. And then here's a, her, uh, her art to do. Okay, some chickens. <laughs> then there's a thing on Sculpey and Polymer Clay. I guess, you know, coloring on it, painting and coloring on it. I really love these succulents. This would be a good one to do. Oh, question. Just bought it. It's the one you're looking at on Amazon. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, good. You like the houses? Yeah, that'll be a fun one to cut out and, uh, and use an art journal. Because, like, again, this is one of the pages that we cut out of the first book. And cut it out and made a poster out of it. And then the other one, too, this one here. You weren't here, Eileen. You just came in. But, look, they put um, two of my pens from their book. Let me find it again. It's in the back here. They, pin, they put... Uh, oh, it's in the new one. Good grief. I'm looking in the old one. Here we go. Our favorite Pinterest, see they put the poster and they put that one that I colored in the back of the magazine. Awesome! Okay, so let's keep going. Let's keep rolling. We asked the artist. I love, this is one of the things I love about uh, uh, Somerset's Art Journal magazine is that they, and a couple others too, they have the We Ask the Artist section. I love listening to artist, you know, interviews. Okay, LBO, thank you for stopping in. Creating a doodling sampler. And they did have some new color books out at the bookstore, but I was like, I was on a mission to find this one. So I didn't really peruse them. I didn't check them out. <laughs> or as our new way of saying it is, perusing or um looking at the awesomeness, looking for the awesomeness. So I'm going to, I'll be uh, perusing the awesomeness at books, I mean at Barnes & Noble tomorrow on the way to Denise's. Oh, look at the owl. That'll be a great one for an art journal. Right? Look, they used it on a color book page, I mean on a book page. I guess what she they did. I don't know if they re, they printed it out or if the girl that drew this um, printed it out on book paper. Hi, Steffi. Hi, Steffi, son. <laughs> so look at that. That wouldn't that be awesome in an art journal page? 
Yeah, on the bee. Ooh, we love bees. That will, and it almost looks like a um, a watch, a clock here. So if we cut this one out and use it on our journal page, we'll have to put uh, watch hands, right? Have to put watch hands on that baby, on that baby bee. <laughs> and then get your color on. This is something about different kinds of watercolors. They did a little bit of a review on. Sakura, Prima, and the watercolor brush pen. So they did a couple of little reviews on that. Another completed project for you to you know you know they, they give you this for an idea. You don't necessarily have to copy what the that person did, right? But it gives you an idea if you like those that color scheme or something. You know, here's some leaves. Isn't this fun, guys? Coloring tools test area. Now, they did have this one in the first one, too. It's like a blank page for you to test to make sure you're... But although this is a pretty thick, you know, this is a pretty thick paper. I think the only thing that might even be any kind of problem with this book would be Sharpies or Copics, you know, alcohol-based markers. And I really don't use those, so I never really, you know, doesn't ever really apply to something I do because I don't use those. If I'm using a marker, it's just going to be, you know, some water-based markers, not any alcohol base that's going to sink through. But this is also good for you to test it if you're using any kind of pens. You know, you want to check, you know, your your uh, Pentel brush pens or your, you know, whatever. So that's, that's always nice to have that there. Some hummingbirds. <clears throat> another completed project some little um like silhouette type people you know like almost like a silhouette see some more houses eileen rebind and rearrange <clears throat> So here it's talking about cutting the spine off and customizing your book. Of course, I just rip it out. <laughs> I just tear them out. And I repurpose them. So I don't know. If I, if I do save color book, and I do, I save color book images from different books. I, I'm putting them in my big idea notebook, my three ring binder that has, you know, I'll put it in a page protector. Um... I showed y'all that last week when we did the I did generating notebook review thingy again. <laughs> so I'll just, um, I'll, I'll find my favorite pages or pieces of pages. Like if I color these houses, no, I want to color, put these houses on an art journal page. Then I'll, I'll color them and cut them out and I might save them, save them in a, uh, in the binder. Yeah, I just rip it out too. And then here's another thing about rebinding it. You can do it a couple of different ways. You know, spiral bind it. That would be good if you are really wanting to save the whole book. Not like cut things out and put it in an art journal, but like actually save the book like this one say. And um, you want to save all the pages. You know, it probably would behoove you to have it uh, unbound and rebound like it's staples or something or if you have one of the you know cinches or bind it alls or whatever complete pages and sheet protectors in a box you do Vicki yeah so uh, and I, I have two I actually have two idea uh, you know notebooks the one where I keep all my written mind mapping list and ideas and all that in that's my three ring binder the big thick one but I also have the 12 12 by 12 it's like a scrapbook book you know 12 by 12 big binder that I use not for scrapbooking but for ideas and 12 inch pages anything that's big right so I have actually have two binders that I keep ideas and stuff in one the eight and a half by 11 and the other 12 by 12 because a lot of your color books are square and they're not going to fit in your small page protectors you like this one with the lady and the stars again you know these are awesome for 
you know, because you want to, I want to use my color book pages if at all possible. Some are just fun to color. And don't let me forget, I do want to show you the uh, Imagimorphia. I did a little quick video of it and posted it, but I've, um, I'm, I'm almost done with that one too. So anyway, yeah, that's, that's one that I'd probably cut out and use in an art journal too. Well, actually, I'd probably use all of these in art journal. Oh, this one would be another good one for drippage. This would be another good one to do like this. You know, kind of like this style. This kind of style. This one is just conducive to that. Now, I'm not looking at how they did it, you know. But, um, yeah, that would be an awesome one for the star lady okay the artist for the star lady hmm let's see oh here it is candy k-a-n-d-i underwood candy underwood you'll have to go find her vicky because i know you probably like really wants to know more about her work yeah candy underwood she's isn't she cute look at her touching the star yeah yeah, thanks for asking, Vicki. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, I'm really liking this girl with the little cupcakes. I know Vicki's going to want me to color the star girl now. <clears throat> yeah, each one of these is a different artist, right? A simple technique for beautiful results. Okay, so this one is using the Stedler... One um, twelve seven. I mean, it's the number of the pencil set is twelve seventy. Not that you get twelve hundred and seventy pencils. It's Stadler's one two seven zero set of colored pencils, and here's their tripless fine liners. So it's just showing you, you know, if you're using those. Where's this? I wonder if this. Uh, Hmm, I don't know. They're just showing a little bit of a peacock here. I thought maybe that would have been in here, but I don't see it yet. So, again, this one... Oh, no, this is by a different girl. This is by Kanita Gupta, G-U-P-T-A, Gupta, Gupta. That's cute, too. You know what I think this would be awesome? To, this would be an awesome mural in a baby's room. Wouldn't that be an awesome mural in a baby's room? Oh, I would have so been hired to do something like that back in my mural days. <laughs> and then here's another face one. Why coloring is good for you. There's no disputing the benefits of coloring. Artists and professionals everywhere are in agreement that coloring can calm the busy mind, help you focus on a pleasing task, and bring you to a peaceful place. But I like to add to that, it can also, it's great practice for your art skills, whether it's shading, blending, coloring, color combinations. Coloring is good for all that too. Just saying. Okay, why coloring is good for you continued. Some flowers. Again, I would love to put these in an art journal. I know there is great art in this book. Isn't there, Vicki? Another owl. This one is Crystal Brashear, B-R-A-S-H-E-A-R, -E from Texas. Another awesome owl. Is that the one on the front? Yeah, there's, that's the one on the front. I know, everybody's going to run out and get it. I'm telling you. <laughs> I got it at Michael's. It came at Michael's before Books A Million. Now, I know it's at Barnes & Noble's because I know Sarah got hers at Barnes & Noble. Okay, we asked the artist, and there's some more questions. And this question was, if you could only choose three colors to use, what would they be? And there's all their answers. Uh, a flower, it's almost like a wallpaper. That's cool looking, isn't it? A turtle. Um, another, oh, this is Lindsay Ostrom, you know, the, uh, lettering lady. I have all her books, her lettering books from back 20 years ago, from the 90s. Lindsay's lettering, and here, see, you can see here's her coloring, and here's the lettering. I know y'all are familiar with Lindsay, right? Lindsay Ostrom, if you've been around any kind of lettering ever, you know who she is. I have to get this coloring book. 
owls, birds, and houses. Yay. <laughs> I know, Val, right? Uh, you ordered it and you want it. You want the one before it. Well, I think you can, you can still get this one. I, if you, I don't know if you, where you ordered the, uh, the first one. I mean the second one. But I know you can probably still get this from Somerset Studio. <clears throat> Stampington. Stampington, you know, of Somerset Studio. Nice little, uh, nice little uh, setting here. You do know, oh, you know what you, Eileen probably knows her personally, I'm sure. Simple ways to use your colored pages. Oh, look, so here they're using it for like wrapping paper. Now, y'all know um, uh, Sherry uses it for an envelope. Sherry, you need to submit some envelopes to them. You need to color a page and, and show them an envelope. Pin it, pin it, Sherry. Simple ways to use your color pages continued. Sherry needs to pin some of her on, like Pinterest is what I mean, Pinterest them. Add gloss, shine, and dimension. So here they're using the glaze, the jelly roll glaze, pins. Another owl, stylized type owl. No, you don't know her personally? Okay, you just know who she is? Yeah. I love, I still have all her uh, books. Her design, they're by Design Originals, I think. Design Originals books. Um, okay, so completed project, another face. Everybody loves the faces. Everybody does. And then her technique here. Oh, this is another technique. Oh, maybe they're using, looks like they're maybe using some cutout things. It looks like some fabric, though. Maybe it's glued. Maybe the paper is glued to the fabric. I can't tell. I'm not reading it right now. I should just read it if I want to know. But it looks like it's on fabric. <clears throat> oh, look, here's a um, like a princess. This is Candy Underwood as well, Vicki, the same girl that did the... Um, star girl you liked here's another one of her pieces isn't that pretty that's another candy underwood oh your birthday card just came in oh good oh good man and speaking of birthdays well i'll look at my birthday book here in a second i don't know whose birthday's this this week i know fees was last week i did send fee a card fiona uh, but on the day of her birthday i did not tweet I, I, I gotta say guys, it's, I kind of rely on either Facebook and since now, um, Dana's not tweeting, I, I lose track of whose birthday it is on the day. I have my list and I send out the birthday cards a week or two ahead of time, but when the day comes, unless I see it on Facebook or somebody, I think today might be Miko's birthday, I think I saw someone tweet is Miko. So I'll look here in a minute. So on y'all, I have to kind of rely on you guys to tell me when it's the birthday day because I send the cards out a week and sometimes two, depending on where they are. If they're over the pond, you know, the, over the pond, I sit, try to send them two weeks ahead. So yeah, <laughs> so I don't want to miss it saying happy birthday to anybody, but I send the cards out. Um, let me. I'll look in a minute, Carrie. Okay, so if we we asked the artist if you could only choose one coloring implement what would it be and then i see markers pencil watercolor so all the different artists answered that question but yeah there you go vicky that's uh yeah this is this is candy underwood candy's candy underwood oh yeah it's with an i yeah k-a-n-d-i underwood okay then here's another completed project Heart, and here's how the person did it. The artist, I'm, I'm guessing the artist designed it and colored it herself, and then there's it for you to color. Okay, another one. Eat cake for no reason. <laughs> They're so happy, aren't they? I got it at Michael's today, but it will be, I mean, it'll be out in Books a Million, and Sarah got hers at Barnes & Noble. My Books A Million just hadn't got it in yet. It just came out on the 1st, which was, what, two, three days ago? What day is today? The 3rd? <laughs> so, yeah. It'll be in the bookstores. It'll be in the bookstores. <clears throat> Working backward. Okay, you might recognize the image below. 
Okay, I'm not sure. This is a, some kind of a project where you use the girl and the... I don't know. I'm not sure. I have, you know, it's a two-page article on some another project working backward. I haven't read it yet. Just got this this morning, like a couple hours ago, guys. Just got it a couple hours ago. Um, so, yeah. Here's another one. Lift your head, princess. If not, your crown falls. Like that. Isn't that cool? There's the finished project. And this one's by Renee Zarate. And you don't have to color it like they do. You know, you can get ideas. Like, I, I think that the yellow ochre and it's kind of a purpley gray, just the color combination is awesome. Yeah, y'all need to follow Julie Topaz. Topaz Pearl Girl on Pinterest. Yeah, she's an awesome pinner. Julie is an awesome pinner. Okay. I really like that one. That's an awesome one to put in an art journal. I might have to do that one. That one shouldn't take too long. Because, uh, again, we could do the dripping. Okay. Because Eileen likes drips. And then this one. Oh, and here's. Did you miss the first issue? Which is this one. Which I already had. So, anyway. Yeah. So, if y'all do want to... If you can't find it at your bookstore, it's the Coloring Studio. Look right here. To order, the coloring, the color dash coloring dash studio dot com. There's the phone number. Let me leave it right there for just a second. Okay, and it's a Somerset Studio stamping ten publication. So if you have a Somerset Studio, the Art Journal, you know, uh, stamping ten. Uh, um, Somerset Studio, Art Journal Magazine. It's they're all the same pu publisher. There's the Artist Index with all their information. So if there's an artist that you like in here, let me find that one for um, uh, Vicky. Candy Underwood. It's CandyUnderwood.com. K A N D I. K-A-N-D-I Underwood.com Julie I mean uh, Vicki and then here's some more presents and cakes birthday that's so cool and then uh, submission guidelines some cool flowers you hold it real still for you Get it? Okay. Share your finished pages with us, which I'll do if we color one. And then again, here's where they uh, pen some from, I mean, uh, publish some from Pinterest. And this one is from the one I did in the first issue, which I just showed y'all here. This one from the first issue with the drippage. And then this one right here, which we cut the face out of and made this poster. So this right here is out of the color book. And then this is like some napkins, some stamping, some painting, some napkins. So it just shows you how you can use your color book pages if you're brave enough to cut them out, which I am. You know, some people probably make copies and and then cut those out and use them. In my case, I just cut it right out of the book, right? <laughs> okay, so that's it, guys. That's the whole book, and it's awesome. I love those hummingbirds. I might have to color that for Mom. That would be pretty in an art journal, too. So I hope y'all enjoyed the little look through the coloring studio. We could probably do a little something-something in it. Like I said, I'm waiting for Hubster to fly in. <laughs> So, hello, Andy. Hang on, guys. I've got to answer this text. Okay. Take a sip of coffee. 
I know, right, Vicki? All right, so let's see what we want to play with. I kind of, I like the B, but I really like that. There's a couple other ones I think would, I know Vicki would like me to work that one, but I don't think I have time to work that whole one, Vicki, you know, in about, you know, an hour or so. I think that might take more than an hour. <clears throat> might take more than an hour. Oh, did I miss this one? Oh, I was looking at the We Ask the Artist, and look, look at that cool teapot. <gasps> that one is awesome. Again, cut it out, cut it out. Turtle, let me see. I like all of them have great possibilities for different purposes. I liked her. I really like her. I think we might do her. Let me let me flatten the book. I gotta turn it over and flatten the book out. You're welcome, Vicky. Yeah, I'm liking her. I think some drips would be cool. You know? You want me to do a drippage one. Well, yeah, the other one that I thought about doing the dripping drippage on was the um The one with the little, this one, her. But I mean, we can do we can do drippage on any of them. <laughs> you have to get this. Well, this is not. This book comes out twice. I think. Well, it's only come out twice so far. I think it's every six months. I don't know if they're gonna. I guess they're gonna keep doing it. But I, right now, I'm thinking it's a, a biannual. So. You know, unless, I'm sure if they start selling, because look, let me see if I, if it's in this one. This is just a few of their magazines. I have the Somerset Studio. I believe I have the very original one from 19, I think it's 1996. I, ha I have a, all the collection of Somerset Studio. <laughs> Up until probably within about the last year or so, I haven't bought every single one. I still buy all the art journaling ones. This is the art journal art journaling one. But I bought them for 20 years, you know, well, 14, 15 years worth of all the different uh, Somerset Studio. Here's the one. I got this one with the Frida on it. That's the... I, that's, I think that's month before last. But they have all kinds of, a couple of different stamper ones. Jewelry, Art Doll, Somerset Life, jewel, another, there's jewel, another jewelry one. Home, Art Quilting, Holidays, Create With Me, with, it's like, you know, working with your kids. Uh, Take 10, which is a card one. Green Craft, Mingle, which is about how to do parties. Uh, and, you know, entertaining, I should say. Artful Blogging, Somerset Memories. Now, I don't know. I have not seen Somerset Memories in my bookstore lately. I wonder about Somerset Memories. Maybe my bookstore just isn't carrying Somerset Memories. Um, Books a Million, I mean. They probably have it. I'll look for it at Barnes & Noble, but that was that's a scrapbooking one. Where Women Create, of course, Somerset Studio, Somerset Studio Gallery, which is like a compilation. I think that one comes out twice a year. Maybe, I don't know, maybe four times, but I know it comes out at least twice a year where it's all the, you know, like a compilation of projects from Somerset Studio. Uh, business, Willow, Willow Sage, and what's this one? Bella, Bella Grace. So they have, you know, fashion, home, parties, you know, it's a little bit of a whole, your whole life you can ro revolve around everything that they have. So, yeah, so when you were talking about subscription to it, I'm sure you can subscribe, but I just wanted you to know that this is not a monthly or bi-monthly yet, you know. Yeah. So, anyway, but they're in the, this one just came out in the bookstores June 1st. So I'm just kind of smashing it down. So what do you think, uh, Eileen? You like you like the face one too? Okay. And this will be a little quicker one. I don't I don't know what we're gonna do yet. I do know I like those colors. I like the um, yellow ochre, like a terracotta, and that's kind of a purpley gray. I'm kind of liking those colors. I don't know that I'll use those exact colors, but you know, I'm thinking that might be cool. 
And also, remember, you can use these in your art journal. And also, think about collaging. Like, I love to add my own collage to, the, to it. So I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so let's do a page. Let me see. Maybe even something out of the astronomy book. <laughs> no, I don't have time to do. I don't have time to search. <clears throat> but I do have some uh, watches and clocks already, you know, pulled. So that won't be too hard to find a watch or a clock. I probably want it in the, like the gold tones rather than the silver. Like here's a really cool silver one, but I think I want to do it in the gold tones. Hmm. Oh, I like this. I wonder if we can use that around her. Like the round her? That would be cool. Let's just play with this. Let's see. Hmm. Do I want, how much do I want? I think I just want the center. I don't know yet. We're just going to play for a minute. It's, it's the creative process at work. Don't know where we're going with it yet. Okay, we don't know where we're going with it yet. And then Monday, don't forget Monday is my usual stream. And I have jury duty Monday afternoon, so I thought this might be fun. If I can, you know, get it all together on Monday, since I'll, it'll have to be, it won't be able to be a double stream because I'll have, I have jury duty at 1.30. I'm thinking what I might do Monday morning is just do another because it's been a while do a like a color book uh, review like show you all the color books that I have well I don't know if I can sh if I have time to show all of them but I can try and uh, just kind of do a color book I don't know if I want to call it a quick flip or a um, oh I like that um, you know kind of show the books that I've got and how many pages we've done in them and, and which ones we have to still finish. I say we because most of it's done here, right? Okay, so I'm liking this. Kind of liking that blue. No, I'm not wanting the blue. I think I want to go with purple. So I think I'm just going to kind of, let's just tear a bit out. I'm going to go around that away. Maybe something like that, part of this. All right, so I want to cut the middle out of that. So let's just cut through the middle. I might want to use this circle too. That would be a cool planet. Something in the background? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, I think I'm going to do that and then just cut it like that goes behind her head, right there, like that. All right, remember, you're the boss of your color book. <laughs> you're the boss of your color book. All right. Grab a folder here, a folder of some more collagey stuff. I hope we're still in focus there. Hopefully. Y'all got any questions or anything? Put them in caps. Hi and bye, Kathy. I missed you. Let me see who else I might have not said hi to. Thanks everybody for stopping in on impromptu. Crafty Jeanette, Crafty Amy, Debbie. Who else did I miss? Carrie, did how did you uh did you leave and come back? <laughs> Lorraine, good to see you, Lorraine, McCarroll, Allie. Hey, Queen Pam. Sam Pat, Sherry, Sky. It was nice to meet Sky too. She she emailed me. That was nice. Um, Stamp my heart, Carol. Val and I said hi to Vicki. Yes, and everybody else that I already said hi to. Okay, so what I'm thinking though is this might look cool behind her. It would kind of a, another kind of a jewelry piece. A piece of jewelry might be cool too. 
I was just thinking this would be good like behind her. So let's just go ahead and cut that in half and let's just see what we could do. Something on the sides. This may be too big. I'm kind of wanting to do some, you know, something like behind the crown. I don't really want to cover up the words because I like that lift your head princess if not the crown falls. Might just go with that. This is a little big. I'm wondering if I should just get a piece of, uh, you know, jewelry. Or I could cut this down. I might just, I think I'm going to get another piece of, uh, out of the jewelry, um, pieces of jewelry. Here we go. Find some uh, vintage jewelry, museum quality jewelry for this lady. How about that? Let's see. You know, I got just different. Uh, and then maybe this could be a little bit of something behind her. I don't know yet. Looks Egyptian. Yeah. It does, and, and that's what I'm thinking, too. Some more jewelry will make it even more so. You know, some kind of a necklace or something. I'm just kind of looking through here. I want something kind of cool. Something very awesome, like this. Well, that no, because it's not drapey. I want something drapey. Maybe some earrings, too. Should we have some matching ear bobs? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm just flipping through some jewelry bits, some calendars, some jewelry bits. <clears throat> got to, got to take a little time for the process. Looking, oh no, those are some awesome earrings little too big but I could cut them down now I'm gonna keep looking I'm gonna be picky especially since I know what cut you know I want I want uh, those specific colors but you know what I do like is these little pieces no that's the wrong color I'm thinking this would be cool this would be awesome inside the moon or whatever we got something I want something and that's not quite bright enough even if we have to paint it in if you have any questions put them in caps I'm just flipping through oh I like this for the crown <gasps> you know what look at these earrings not as an earring though but that might be cool as part of the crown I don't know if we'll have enough room because I don't want to cover up the words, right? I don't want to have some kind of drip, you know, the dripping, but that would be awesome. Look, isn't that awesome right there? But it would cover up, let me just kind of trim it out. Let's just see. See, wouldn't that be cool? But it's going to cover up. Well, I could write over the top. Or I could just pull it down some. Let's trim it down a little bit more. Trim it down. And pull it down to here. There we go. Now we're kicking. What do y'all think? Does that look cool? <laughs> then he goes, ooh, nice. And then color this. So you just kind of like that. Okay, we're going with that. Hang on, I still got to find her a necklace. <laughs> I got to find her a necklace. You know what, what I think would be cool? All right, so here is some other... I think some somebody looking at her would be cool. Like some kind of a face up here. And we can just trim this off. Hang on. Like 
All right, so for instance, if this was like right in here, some kind of a face looking at her. See, that would work on the crown too, look. But that's kind of silver and I'm trying to want to stay with the gold colors. You still like the other part of her neck. That, oh, that watch part, this, but it covers her completely. What do y'all see? It covers her completely up. Y'all like that, though? I mean, I like it, too, but we're covering up so much of the color book page. What do y'all think? I'll leave it there for a minute. We'll think about it. Look at this little piece of, that's a cool little bit, too. That would be... Hmm, let me see. Let me just trim that down. Let's see what we can do with that little bit. I don't know why I'm using these ginormous scissors. Why am I using these huge scissors? I don't know. <laughs> I've got my little cutter bees. I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> but this would be a cool like little crown on top of somebody else. Or, no, you know what? It could also be like a falling crown. Oh, like that. Like, I like that. And I don't know why I really want this black dot there. <laughs> I kind of do. But I think that little bit of crown just kind of falling with the words. So look, you can take a ring. Look, that's a bit of a ring. And just cut the center out. I want something. I'm still looking at the necklace, though. Hmm. Some bracelets. Oh, look at these. Where's my big, giant, enormous scissors go? Look at this. This is a bit of a necklace, but look what it could be an earring. Let's see here. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> you can't find your cutter bees. You're using your gigantic scissors too. I know, right? I, my cutter bees are right over there. I actually had two pair. One went missing. I think one of the kids might have taken it home because they're so good. Not mention any names, <clears throat> Samantha. <laughs> okay, so look at this, though. I'm thinking, I got two of them, so if it was, like, cut in half, I'm just wondering. No, it looks like weird ears now. It needs to come, it would need to come, they need to come down here. And then that covers up this necklace. see what I'm talking about the earrings are cool but then it kind of covers up the necklace right we're we don't we want to leave some of the color book page <laughs> oh, we want to leave some of the color book page but I really like that maybe some epaulets 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 is that too much? Are the epaulets, is this, am I saying that right? Too much? The little shoulder things? Okay, I think we just might have to go, oh look, see this would be another good crown bit, look. You can find a smaller, you, yeah, I could find a smaller necklace or I could just cut this one down. But it is looking very Egyptian, isn't it? It is looking, Cut a triangle out of the necklace. Cut a triangle out of the necklace. Hmm, not sure I'll fall on that one. <clears throat> you know, I just, I like that. Yeah, they do fit. Hey, Crocker, too. But I don't know that she needs it. We might be overdoing it. What do you think? That might be an overdo. Because we do want to put the dripping, too. I might not even need that. All right? I'm going to set it over there to the side. Just, you know, we'll see. Okay. I think we'll just go with this. We'll run with it. We'll roll with it. But look. I mean, so many cool jewelry bits, right? Even just one of these gold circles. Let me cut one of these out. Again, 
Can you have too many jewels on an Egyptian princess? <laughs> Can we have too many jewels on an Egyptian princess? Can we have too much elaborate? Okay, maybe we can. <laughs> you think not? <laughs> All right, but I do need to get crack a lack on paint because I, I, you know, I really am kind of limited on my time today. So let's just go with that. We'll go with this, and and I'm not sure about that. I just don't know if we're going to need that when we add color. I just kind of like the black bit right there. You know. No epaulets, okay. All right, so there we go. Let's just kind of keep all those little bits. I think that's the same size. All right, what do y'all think? Are we making progress here? <laughs> I'm not sure about the black, though. I really like the black, but we're going to have drippage, so that may not be necessary. You know what I mean, Vern? We'll think about it. I won't put that on right away. Liking it? Okay. All right, so now there's a couple different things you can do. If, if you're going to add a lot of acrylic paint, remember, if you want to be able to blend something in and wipe it away, you really have to have matte medium over it so that it can wipe away. I'm going to just go ahead and glue these on here with, um, I'm going to glue it on here with Eileen's Tacky. But I'm not going to do it till the end because I've pretty much have fussy cut them out. You see what I mean? They're pretty fussy cut it out. There's not going to be a lot of blending I have to do. So these can almost be like the, the top layer of the layering process because I'm going to do more washy type kind of thing, not uh, a lot of solid paint. Am I making sense? In other words, I'm not going to put a lot of acrylic paint that needs to be... These don't have to be blended into the background, right? They're, they're sitting on top of everything. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of move them off to the side here, and we're going to do some coloring, and then we're going to glue this stuff on top. Okay, rather than paint them in. I, I hope that makes sense. Like when I do my art cards, they have to be painted in. This is going to be more like glued on top. Okay, got it? Okay, thanks, Vicki. Right, let me take a sip of coffee. All right, so I'm going to get the paint colors out that I want. I'm going to want the brown, a gray, a yellow ochre. Well, the brown I'm going to use is, this is raw sienna. It's kind of like the gold. I'm going to kind of go with this color scheme, right? I'm going to use that for inspiration, but I'm not going to color it like that. I'm going to color it more just different. Okay, so there. We got that. Oh, and I do need something behind. Because you don't want to get all your pages, like, you don't want the, um, you don't want the paint getting on the next page if, if you don't have to, right? So I'm going to put a piece of paper behind it. Again, I'm trying to flatten out the spine as much as I can. And then the purpley color, I want a gray, grayed down purple. So I'm probably going to get a purple, but I'm going to probably add a little bit of uh, brown to it. I want it grayed, kind of grayed down, and I'm not sure if I want this more of a color or more of a purpley color. This one will probably gray down better. What's this one? Black plum. I think I'll just go with black plum. That's already kind of a muted purple. All right, so we're going to go with black plum, raw sienna, and I'm going to take the lid off because I've got a paint booger on here. Hang on, guys. Let me get pokey to it. This is what happens when you, this is what happens when you don't close the lid. <laughs> that, that forms in the lid, right? All right. So I got that out. Now I'll put the lid back on. It's always good not see how I left it open that's what will clog it up all right so got that 
And we got the uh, raw sienna, and I want a yellow ochre or a golden, you know, here's a moon yellow. That'll work. Just a lighter, not a bright yellow, something. So there's our colors that we're going to go with. Okay, moon yellow, raw sienna, and black plum. And they're all Americana. People ask me what kind of paint. I just like Americana craft paints. You can use other craft paints, but d don't get kinds with gloss if you plan on putting color pencil. The gloss can affect the smoothness of your color pencil. So this is matte paint, no gloss in it. Yikes. I missed something on the yikes, Miss Allie. All right. And then we might have a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit of persimmon for the, the drips. I think we're going to have some persimmon drips. But I won't put that on here because I'm going to have to wash that. I'm going to have to wet that down quite a bit. So we'll probably put that on a separate palette and wet it down to make drips. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Now remember, I mean, I don't need to paint... I'll paint her shoulders here because look, this is going to cover almost of it up. I could make it a little bit smaller. Let's just go with a little, I'm going to trim it down just a little so that it kind of fits up a little higher. There we go. Okay. There's always, always close. My paints are close. Persimmon drips sound delicious. <laughs> yeah, that would be a write that down, Vicky. We just invented a new candy. Persimmon drips. <laughs> okay, so I want her to be, um, you know, in the in the. I want her to be darker. So let's see. Do I want a little bit darker? That I might just add just a tiny bit of purple to this, just to darken up the sienna just a little bit. Let's see here. Let me get a flat brush. There we go. All right. So I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to start with just water, you know, I just watered it down just a little bit. And of course I got way much paint, more paint than I'm going to need, but we're going to start with just having her be a nice, and remember this is not watercolor paper. It's going to soak right in as soon as you touch it. But if you want to smooth the skin out, we'll do that with color pencil. So we, we'll see. All right, so right now I'm just going to add a layer of color on her. i got to keep my brush damp. I'm not really adding a lot of water. It's just more my brush is kind of damp. All right. Whoops. Don't drop your brush. Okay. Persimmons, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the colors that I'm using, Jeannie, are moon yellow, black plum, and this is raw sienna. Okay, and then for the drips, I'm going to use persimmon. Okay, now if I want to darken that, I'm going to take a tiny bit of the plum, and so I can just, in a little tiny bit of water. And I'll do a little, t that's another thing about having a sheet behind here. It's a good place to test. I want some shadow, right? It's too, a little bit more. Just a little, just a tiny bit darker than that. Because I just want a little bit of shadow. Now, again, you want to be careful of oversaturating. This one's not so bad, this color book, because it's pretty thick. It's probably at least a... 65 weight paper, so it's not like some tiny, thin, thin um, a paper where it's going to, like, really, you have to really watch how much water you put on, right? Some of the, pa some color books are, you got to dry between layering. In other words, you don't want to just keep layering, 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 because the water is going to saturate your paper. Maybe not the paint, but the water is going to saturate. So you want to be careful of that. Okay, and I do want to do her neck. Let me just add a little bit more water to that because uh, a little bit of it might show. I don't think much of her neck's going to show with that necklace we picked for her. 
and then um, I'm gonna have her I'm gonna have purple over here on the her shoulders like maybe part of her clothing is showing so I'm just putting a little bit of the purple here right oh maybe a little bit of because look let me get her necklace again see not much is going to show okay just probably that much that's probably all that's going to show a little brighter purple though because those are the colors that i really want to stand out love that plum color yeah yeah, it's a, it's a good, it is a good thickness, Vicki. It's not like, it's not like, it's probably like I said, probably about, you know, 65 weight. Okay. Then, I think I want her to have some pretty plum lips. So I'm going to put some in the corners and then wet my brush and just kind of water, water it, you know, lighten it up along the middle there like that. I sh I'll probably, should zoom in, but... Let me go ahead and zoom in some, guys, since we're only working on one page. I can do that. Now let me re-auto-focus. Is it pretty focused? It's pretty focused. Pretty good, right? Okay, and then her crown. I don't want to lose these bits now. Let me see. Her head's going to have this, so she's not even going to hardly see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of this out just a little bit. Just so a little bit more of her head shows. I like that a little better. Need it to be right over her eye like that. So I have it fixed. I have it cut, trimmed down, just fit the side of her face. So it's going to go like right there, and then we're going to have this bit. It's going to go right here, and then I'll probably color around those. I think these need to be yellow ochre, but I want the, these to be like a plum jewel. You know, I want this to be like a jewel, like amethyst maybe. And we'll add, we can add a little bit more color pencil to make it a little brighter. But I don't want it too bright. I want it those muted colors. Looking cool? Oh, good, Vicki. You did some jellyfish? Okay. Vicki S. All right, so there. And again, I don't want to lose my bits. All right, where's her necklace? Where'd it go? Here it is. Because it's not... The, got the fan blowing on me behind me. Let me t let me tilt my camera just a little bit. There we go. All right. All right. So now I want some of the the moon yellow. I'm gonna have her kind of have like a glow. I want some around the jewel here. So it's, you know, and we can also put some color pencil glow coming out of that if we want to. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of a wash on the bits that might kind of show behind the watch part. Because I'm going to, I'll shade that in with some other colors, but just to have a color on there. Okay, and the same thing for her earrings. I think I'm going to go ahead and make those amethyst too. I'm keeping it pretty, you know, simple as far as a variety of colors. All right, do I want a little bit, you know, how uh, Egyptian ladies have that um, eye eyeliner kind of very dramatic eyeliner? I think we'll put some dramatic eyeliner. All right, let's go back to a little, I'm going to get a little bit more of the purple and the sienna just to darken the sienna. Just a little. Test it over there. It's not quite dark enough. And test it over here. There we go. Just a little bit darker so I can do a little bit more shading here. Hey! 
Jamie. We're just coloring a page in the new Somerset Studio. Well, we're going to mix media it. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit more shadow. And again, we can add some more with color pencil. Not much of this is really going to show on our forehead. Maybe this, I'll put some up there just in case a little bit shows. I'm going to kind of water that down. I don't really, I don't want to look like she has a mustache. I want this just to be a little shadowed on this side under her chin. I mean her cheeks. Like she has a little bit of sculpted cheeks here. Just a little. Okay, I can I can tell the wa it's the paper saturated. I gotta be careful here, but with it not adding any more water till I hit it with the heat gun. Otherwise we're gonna have um, saturated paper. Don't want that. You get Barnes and Noble uh, coupons if you sign up for their email. Be on their email list and they'll send them to you. I think there's a 20% Father's Day one out right now. Okay, I got to be careful here because I don't want to get this too wet. The, the paper's wet enough. All right, let me go ahead and hit it with the heat gun because I don't want to get, I don't want, I don't want this to soak all the way through. blow my collage bits away either. Okay, so I think I want her to have some kind of a glow though behind her. So I'm going to go ahead and use the moon yellow and somehow I just want the paper to be this color, right? Like it's I just want to have kind of a wash of glow behind her. And then we can add some white color pencil to even... Whoop, I can't remember to stay in camera here. Just to have the edges. Again, it's going to pretty much be, a lot of this is going to be covered up with uh, her big necklace, right? just kind of lightly with the wash just to give her a little bit of a because we're going to have drippage right we're going to have drippage all right this won't take we're not going to take too long all right let me go and dry this again so that the paper is not saturated It's not really cloudy out there. And I really think I should do the dripping first because here's why. Because I'm not matte medium, I'm not putting matte medium on this. So I've got to figure out what I want to color these too. Almost could use a little bit of a, hmm, do I want to go with a little bit of a green in there? Maybe. Uh, I think I will get a little bit of an olive green. So I'm going to go with a Hauser medium green. I'm going to add a little bit of green here and there. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, because there's no matte medium on my collage bits, I really don't want to get these wet. If I glue this on now and start adding lots of dripping and water, it's going to start wrinkling this. Because these are not glued down with matte medium, which protects your collage bits from further harm. <laughs> so I want that to be the very, pretty much the very last thing I do, right? Is, uh, so I want to get everything painted and dry before I add the um, and just a little bit of her 
behind her show just a little. So I'm going to give her a little bit of an olive green shadow back there. Not much of it showed. But. Okay, and the same thing up here in some of her crown. I think I'm going to do a little bit of... Uh, I'll, I'll do most of it with color pencil. But I'm going to add just a little bit of the green. Just to give it a little bit more variety, right? And here comes my sanitation workers. Okay, so something like that. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more blending on her face with color pencil. Not a lot, just a little. Okay. All right, let me dry this now. I'm trying to kind of keep it kind of simple. I mean, we can add some stamping or or you know what we haven't used for maybe some stencils. Maybe some stenciling would be good on it. What do y'all think? A little bit of designs. But well, I'm going to do dripping too. So I don't want to get it too busy because we're going to have drips. But I'm wondering if I want a little bit of stencil. Thinking, thinking. Thinking. Let me move some of my collage bits. I gotta have some space here. Gotta have some space. simple design. I'm just wondering just some simple design in the background. Because it's going to have dripping, so I don't want too much. You know, but maybe a little bit of something in the background. What do y'all think? Let's try some. We can always paint over it. Alright, so I'm going get to get my... Uh, a little bit of uh, makeup wedge, cut off any dried paint. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use a little bit of the uh, sienna. I just want to maybe a little bit on the edges. Let's see. I'm not getting any feedback. I'm not getting any. I'm not getting any feedback on the on the. Uh, So I'm not getting any feedback. I'm just going to go for it. And I'm not putting any water. No water. Let's just see. No water. I want it very dry. And then we'll blend it in with, we'll blend in the other color with the yellow here in a minute. Just want to get some design on here. So I don't want any water soaking, you know, under going underneath the stencil. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> I always make it work. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I like to hear what y'all have to say. Uh, very dry. And I'm going to blend in these, whoops, see, there we go. I'm going to blend in these edges with the yellow. It just gives it a little more oomph, right? Okay, same thing. I'm going to do that some of that down in here. Let me just write down in here. Let's see how far I want to bring it in. Y'all just too busy gabbing. <laughs> It's very dry, so I'm just taking my time with the dry, very, you know, no water at all. No water in my sponge. It's a perfectly dry sponge. That way you don't go underneath the stencil. 
Okay, I'm trying to hold the stencil nice and tight without letting it move. Okay, it's a little bit more up here. Just taking my time. And you could do this probably with your Distress ink pads, you know. I'm just using the paint. I'm trying to get down in here in the crack, the crevice. Now I kind of shift my hold. A little bit more in here. Okay. All right. Now, if I can do it real, like a light layer, just needs a little bit right up in here. But I don't really want to, I want to be careful not to cover up my lettering because I'm going to have drips up there. So I'm just going to a little bit right up in here. Then we're going to do some drips and a little bit of shading. What did Eileen say? You should draw a gargoyle. <laughs> Uh, I actually have some gargoyle uh, collage bits. Don't make me put gar gargoyles on our Egyptian princess. Although that's what they, they, you know, to ward off evil, gargoyles were. People think they were like evil something. They, they were to ward off evil on the buildings. To protect the buildings. Alright, so let me just get a little bit more going here. But no, this is Egyptian. We're going to stick with the Egyptian princess theme. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush. Okay, it's damp. It's not wet. Let me move everything out of the way here. And what I'm going to do is just take some of this yellow ochre. I mean the uh, moon yellow. And see how I'm going to just kind of blend that in. So it's not like a real harsh line there, just a little bit of blending in. You know what I mean, Vern? You can kind of blend it in with your finger too. See how that just kind of blends in? And if it doesn't blend in enough, the, fir you, the first um, layer, you can always add more paint. Let, like, let that dr layer dry and add more. Just kind of feather that out right there. Let me get my wet that down just to feather that out a little. So you see? Okay, so it needs a little bit brighter yellow down here now that I've put that up there. Kind of like that. Come over here. I kind of want to keep some white though. I want I want to try to kind of blend this the uh, sienna in, but I don't want to lose all the white. So I'm being kind of careful. Let me get my brush just a little wetter and just kind of feather that out. Cuz so I don't want to lose all that white. I like that little bit of contrast there. Gives her like a glow around her head. Thanks guys. Just another idea of using your color book. You can paint in it. Just be careful not to oversaturate the paper. Okay? Uh, just dry it in between your layering. It's going to look awesome when we get it all glued, everything glued on. And this is a this piece of artwork is by Renee Zarate, Z A R A T E, Zarate, Zarati from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So thank you, Renee, for contributing this awesome piece for us to play with. Okay. There we go. All right, it's time for some drippage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanted to do um, the persimmon, which is probably not, might not, we might have to add a little plum. We might have to add some plum drippage too. I'm just going to pour a little bit out there, and what I'm going to do is just, let me, move, let me move the page over here for a minute. I'm going to add water, okay, water it down. I'm going to get a fluffy brush, which is a brush that's just like soft 
bristles like soft you know kind of a fluff well it's wet now but it's kind of a fluffy brush and just kind of do this right and what we're gonna do is I gotta put something down here on the bottom let me just get paper towel because when I hold the book up I don't want this paint going in my lap so when I tilt the book up it'll go onto the paper towel right all right, so um, I think I can probably move this paper from behind for a minute. Oh, I don't want to lose all my little collage bits there. All right, so what I'm going to do is just come along the top, and I'm just going to kind of really get it wet, right? I'm going to really get it wet. Now it's, Now what I'm going to do is tilt it up and hit it with the, with the spray bottle. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so now I'm, kind of, I'm kind of doing it strategically. I want it to drip, but not necessarily want it to drip right over her face. You might have to be a little okay, strategic about that. Okay, so let's see if we can get some drips going right behind her there. I'm going to just kind of make the drip stop right there. Okay. Strategic drippage. Strategic drippage. I want more over on this side because it's going to be on the side. So we can let it really go dripping there. Maybe some more. Just going to pull it down with the brush. Oh, I don't know how much you can see of that. I'm trying to keep it in camera. I should have maybe backed the camera out. Okay, so I'm going to add some more paint, more water. Let it go, let it go, let it go. There it goes. See, I just don't really want it right, like right down her face, right? Okay, so I'm going to do a little strategic drippage with my brush. All right, and something like that. I think I want some purple splots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here and try not to get the paint two colors mixed up. I'm going to kind of tilt my palette over here and just get some water down here in the edge. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is cover up her face. Let me get another paper towel. What am I going to do with the paper towels? Oh, there you go. I'm going to get another paper towel. And I'm going to cover up her face. And now I'm going to just take my loaded down paintbrush with purple. Now I don't want to get too much up there on the words. Because I, we don't want to lose the word. I mean, I could get a couple up there, but I don't want the words to be um, not not readable, right? All right, so I think that's enough splats. All right, so there we go. Now let me go ahead and a little bit too much splat right there. There we go. All right, let me dry this, and I'll kind of move it up and down so you can see it while we're doing that. It does take splats a little longer to dry. And I did, you know, go over the words with the paint. If you lose the darkness of the black paint, make sure this is 100% dry. And then you go back over that with your, you know, color pencil or a pen that won't soak through. Don't use a Sharpie marker. But if, if you kind of lose the uh, darkness of the black, in the lettering and same thing I'm going to go in her eyes with black pencil I want the, her eyes to be nice and black so the splots just take a little bit minute more to dry you like it? you like the colors I think? Thanks. we use the inspiration piece you know the one I just added a little bit brighter orange and a little brighter purple. You really want it dry before you start coming in here with any pencil or glue for that matter. You want to be gluing stuff down on wet paper and your paper will curl a little bit but you can, it'll flatten back out, trust me, it'll, it'll be fine. All right, let me move my paper towels, my paint. Hope I didn't blow my bits of collage away. Wait, wait I got something missing. Oh no, my little point. 
Where's my little pointy piece? There it is. Don't want to lose that. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and quickly do a little bit of shading on our face, and then we're going to do the um, we're going to do the uh, gluing down. All right. So let's get in here. Get a few pencils over here. Don't want to lose the little crown tip. I got my four pieces of collage to glue down. Dippage and splat. So cool. Yes. Thank you, Trina. All right. So let me get a sienna color. Terracotta would melt. Yeah. Let's go with terracotta. Um, goldenrod. And I want plum. I want a plum color. Let's see. Is this dark? Let's see. Dark purple might work. Let me sharpen this dark purple and see how purple it is. Yeah, there we go. So those three colors. So I'm going to take the dark purple and any place where it's the amethyst kind of color and just kind of it'll brighten up the purple even more. Can you kind of see that? Just a little bit of shading. Not going to not do a lot, right? That's purple there. I'm going to shade her lips just a little. I'm going to do it on the edge. Just a little bit of purple and then I'll take a white, uh, well, I think I'll go with lilac. I don't really need white, but uh, lilac color to kind of blend the purple. So she still has a highlight on her lips. See that? So she still has a highlighted lip. Let's go with the earrings, just a little bit of shadow on the earrings. Remember, all this is going to be covered up, but there might be a little bit of her shoulder showing. When I, after I get her necklace on there, just brighten that up a little. Okay. There we go. Now let's go in here with the uh, Sienna. And I'm just going to go in here. And I want to add, I'm going to need a tan color too. Let's see. I'm going to need a... Uh, I need tan. Let's see. Oh, yeah, probably... This won't probably work. Ginger root, I think that's ginger root. Okay, so we're just gonna go in. Oh, the other thing that we had purple was her eyeshadow. I forgot about her eyeshadow. Let's go ahead and do the 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 bright, you know, the uh, pointy eyeshadow, like the Egyptian. You see, and you know, the eyeliner is very dramatic. So we're gonna add that. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in here and just shade a little bit. Again, I don't, I'm not going to try to make her a portrait. I just want her to be and this is Sienna. I'm just kind of lightly adding. Remember, we're going on top of acrylic paint. You can do a lot of stuff. Let me see how far this comes down. Yeah, I don't need, I don't even hardly need to do up there because that's going to be, not show at all. Okay. Because we're going on acrylic paint, you can do a lot more blending and stuff, right? Just like I do on my, um, well, I don't put I don't put paint on the faces in my portrait, but you've seen me put the paint on like the hair and the, you know, clothes and stuff like that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sienna so I have something to blend with. a little here. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of the ginger root to kind of just blend. It's going to kind of blend her face in a little bit. Can you see? And you can add a little bit of white highlight. Let me get my, where's my white? Um, hang on. You can you can add highlights even on dark skin because they'll still they're going to have highlights on their skin so you can still add a little bit of you know highlighting where the lights really 
bounce them off. Maybe there. Maybe a little like a lip line, maybe a little bit on our nose. Just to give it a little bit more oomph. Maybe just a tiny bit of highlight on our lip. Okay, now I'm going back to the uh, ginger root and just going back to blending in. Blending in the uh, sienna on our skin. And you can spend as much time as you want doing all the blending and everything. Okay. And I'm going to also add darker eyes and probably another like pop of highlight in our eyes. So I'm just going along the edge here. Can y'all hope y'all can see? See how it's blending in? And you can use a tan or a ginger root or you know, depending on how dark the skin is. with it yep you can see okay good thanks guys all right and then if we get if it gets a little light again we can go back in with some more sienna because I'm you got to just take light layers when you try to blend don't be trying to like get five colors with the one application you know with just one quick application it's just best to take your time take your time and just blend blend you know, light layers is better. Nice light layers. And I want to highlight under that eye too. Okay, so I can go back in here with the sienna if I want and add some more color to her face. And just do this a couple times. You can do it a lot of times. Trust me, you could do it 50 times. Well, maybe not 50, maybe 30. <laughs> you can keep at building color up, building color up. As long as you keep it light layers. Once you start getting the waxy build up, it's just the, the blending won't work. The blending just won't work if you get it too built up. So the lighter layers that you do, the better, right? So I'm just barely pushing down. I mean, I'm not even pushing down, I'm skimming. I'm just skimming the surface. But you can see how it builds up. Okay. I'm going to go back to the ginger root and start blending that in. I'm not going to do too much here because of time and all, but uh, as y'all can see, and I'll post it on Twitter, and I'll uh, I'll link colors. And the Twitter name is it's Stampington is their publishing name, but they have Coloring Studio. I don't know if it's a dash between it. I'll post it so y'all can see. Then y'all can follow them on Twitter if you're on Twitter. But it's, I think it's Coloring Studio, like at Coloring Studio. So I'll post a picture with a link to them so you can follow them. Because then when other people post their pictures, you'll be able to see what they post too, right? Okay, so you, I think that's good. This is going to look good when I get the... Yeah, I'm getting ready to put the collage, but I'm trying to kind of hurry. All right, now let me get black. I want my black pencil. Okay. And I want to I want to darken up the pupils and her like eyelid. See, I don't even know if y'all can tell. I'm gonna darken up. See the difference, and that'll make a difference too. Uh, wait, if you go over these lettering, go back over the lettering. Let, let me sharpen this nice and sharp. I could probably go over it with the. Um, uh, pit pen. The pit pen will probably not go through. Let me do a test here. Where's my pit pen? Oh. Even the brush pen. Maybe the brush. Maybe the nice pen. Alright, let me do a little test here. I'm just going to do one little top of the L here. 
Let's make sure it's not going through. No, it's not going through. Okay, so I'm not going to go over every letter, but some of the thicker parts. I'm just going to re-darken. Can you all kind of see? You can do this with a pencil, too. Your, your uh, black pencil. Just to kind of go back over, because I added layers of acrylic paint over this. And it kind of dulled down. Kind of dulled down the lettering. So I'm just going to kind of hit it with the black pit pen to bring back the dark black back out, right, just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with my pencil, though, back into this side. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, that broke. <laughs> and I think I'm going to go over that white spot there. Add my own. I want her to have nice, very dark black eyes. And then I'm going to go back in there with a white. You can go back in there with a Posca pen or a, uh, some white acrylic. But I also want to add some more white under her eye here. I think I'll do that with the Posca too. Where's my Posca? Where's my Posca? Just a white Posca paint pen. Um, you could use a gel pen or just white acrylic paint. I could also just do this with white acrylic paint, right? But I want a little bit more white highlight. I'll go on top right there too on a little bit more highlight on top of the eye. A little bit on the tip of her nose. And it's barely showing up. Right along her lip line. Just a little bit of extra highlight there. Okay, I'm going to take my black pen. I'm going to straighten out our nostrils a little. Just kind of add a little bit of more depth in our nostrils. And on the side where this line is here, I don't, whoops, that's purple. Let's don't put that. Let's get Sienna. We just want a little bit of, let me blend that out. Just so it's not a black line there from the color book line. Okay. Just kind of fix her nostrils a little there. Back with the sienna. That's the purple of the sienna. Just kind of blend that in. Okay. Um, need some sienna right here, right along the face line. See, I'm going get, to start getting too fussy if I'm not careful to try to get rid of color book lines. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to leave some of the color book lines, so I'm going to stop. You know what I mean, Vern? Because it'll be easy to start trying to work those out. All right, so I think I'm going to stop with that. Oh, one other thing. Let's go back to the pupils. I'm going to give her another little sparkle. Her eye. Like it? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do some, let's go ahead and stop and glue everything now. All right, oh, I don't want to lose my bits. Where's my bits? Okay, there they are. All right because then we might have to do a little bit of fussy painting around that. So I'm just going to use some Eileen's Tacky Glue. Again, normally when I do collage, normally when I do collage, I do with Golden Matte Medium because it goes under, over, flattens everything out really well. So to make sure that, you know, you don't want to, uh, you want this to be the last step if you're going to, um, 
if you're going to put this on top, you don't want to get this stuff wet. You don't want to get your collage elements re-wet. If you're going to, uh, I'm just going to get a foam book here to glue down. Um, <clears throat> oh wait, I got to do the crown first. I'm going to do this part first. And I, I'm going to put a good amount of glue and I'm going to flatten it all out, all the way off the edge. You want this nice and glued down because you're not going over the top of it, right? So you want to make sure that you're carefully getting the wrinkles out. Okay, you can just take a second and really work that down, right? Because we're not putting a coat of matte medium on top. You want to just, you know, really just take a second and, you know, nice and smooth, right? All right, now let's go ahead and do the little top crown. Again, I'm putting a a good amount of glue but I'm smoothing it all the way off the edge so that there's no little bits coming up. And I'll fill that in, that white area there, I'll probably just fill that in black. And I'm going to go back around the little um, area there to make it look like the jewels on top. Okay, so you got to fussy play a little bit there. All right. Okay, and I'll add a little bit of paint or a little bit of color right there on the edge. Okay, so let me just make sure that's nice and glued. Get a fresh page and glue down her. Let's do this little crown bit that's fall. Remember, we we're going to do off the edge over here. All right, so let me glue that down. And I'll back out from the zoom in here. I want that to show over there. there. I'll zoom back out because I wanted to be really zoomed in when we were doing the detail. All right, let's get another clean page in the phone book. I'm going to put a good bit, but don't ever leave it like this. See how I'm rolling out that glue like that? Don't leave it like that because you try to glue that down, all those lumps. Um, all, because I'm just using so many other things and we did the coloring first. Yeah, I'm not doing it because this is not a collage piece. Uh, really, I'm just adding some collage things on top, but it's not like I'm not having to blend these in. I'm not having to paint the images into the background. They're really just laying on top other than just a couple little bits right there, right? So the, the matte medium is beneficial. The matte medium is beneficial when you want to paint on top. Okay, I cannot paint on top of this. Okay, I need to trim that right there. Well, I'll just I'll just color it in. You can't paint on top of this and have it wipe away. Okay, like for instance, I might want to get rid of some of the words here of the watch. I can paint on it, but I can't wipe it back like you can with matte medium. Matte medium is like a coating. It's like a coating. So that you could, if you put paint on top of it, you just wipe it right away, right? Okay, so a little bit of our shirt there showing. So I'm going to go back in there with, under there too with some purple. All right, so I'm just going to kind of mash that down on there. All right. I hope that makes sense. I, I explain it better when I'm using matte medium on my collage process. Okay, so now I'm going to just take in here and I'm just going to kind of just make sure it looks kind of like it's a little bit blended into behind her neck there. Right. All right, and then down here where that's the purple, I gotta sharpen my plum color again. You know, sharpen, sharpen. So as you, as you can see, we did the coloring first rather than the coloring on top of the collage. Okay? In other words, we did all the background painting first. I'm not trying to blend these collage elements in like on an art card. Let me grab an art card. Okay, so for instance, on this watch bit, 
See how we've blended it into the background with paint on top of it? We're not trying to blend this into the background. It's on top. Does that make sense? Let me find maybe a better sample. Um, okay, here's a better sample. See how we're blending the things into the background with paint? The paint's on top and setting the imagery back with paint. We're not doing that here. The images are actually on top. I hope, I hope that's explaining it. I think you understand it better when you see me doing the art cards rather than a color book page. Okay, so I'm just, ugh, I broke again. Hang on. You gotta love our Prisma colors. <laughs> okay, let's see if that's gonna, that's gonna break too. Let me keep sharpening it down to a nub. <laughs> Love my Prisma colors, but you know, they have their moments. All right, so I just want to kind of maybe make those kind of a darker purple there. And just maybe blend a little bit in here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Maybe just a little shadow under it here. Let's go ahead and put a little bit underneath, and then I can go blend that with a little bit of lilac. Where's my lilac? Just blend that in a little. So again, I'm going to back out in a minute and see, you'll see the whole page and um, everything we've done. Okay, so for instance, I may not want all these letters to show. I mean, I want them to look like you can see something there, but I may not want you to be able to spell out like the name of the watch or whatever, right? So I'm going to get my get a smaller brush here. <laughs> my whole desk is... Okay, so I think I'm going to try this. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good color. Let me maybe just a little bit... Of, my paint's dried out. Let me get a little bit of the sienna out. And a little bit of the, just kind of darken that up just a touch. And I might just want to kind of just get rid of, like, say, maybe the bottom of the letters or something, just so you can't really, it's not really something readable, right? Just kind of blend that out a little. You know what I mean, Burn? And sometimes it'll take a couple of coats, you know, Depending on how thick you're, I'm, I'm doing it really thin. I'm, I'm trying to keep it, okay, and then I'll take a little of just the straight Sienna. And then I'll go back in there with, as soon as, uh, I'll let this paint dry, and then I'll go back on here with white or another light color and highlight. Because it's acrylic paint, I can go back on here with color pencil. Color pencil will not really color on top of um, color pencil will not really color on top of um, magazine images because it's slick, right? I need a little bit of black. Come on, I know there's a little bit in there. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, just a little bit of. So I'm not trying to blend this into the background. I'm just adding a little bit of paint on it because then I can add color pencil to, sh to highlight. All right. So just here and there, I'm just adding a little bit of color pencil. I mean, a, a acrylic paint. Same thing up here. I'm going to want to... Um, fill in this, this is where we, this was already white, um, this little bit right here was white from the cutout, but it lo looks like there's, like there's a hole in her head if there's nothing right there. So I'm just going to kind of fill that in. Just fill that in. And you can kind of play around with, you know, edges right here. I want to maybe bring that straight down inside of her face. Okay, and then that's part of her forehead. I'm going to color that in with some, a little bit of sienna. Let's 
just a little layering process. That's the purpose. I'm just going to put a little bit of sienna there and just a tiny bit of blending. Maybe blend just a tiny bit under the under the little image there. I think I want that eyebrow nice and black too. Let me go back over that eyebrow, make it stand out. Okay, anything else? Maybe that eye. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to do with that. Okay. Sharpen up. Where's that black? Where did I put the black? Oh, there it is. I'm going to sharpen up this edge right here. And then the other thing I want to do real quick is fix this. I want a jewel on top. So where that element, I could have just cut that out, but I'm going to go ahead and just put this purple jewel right back over the top. And then I'll add pencil. Got to make sure make sure if you paint over something like this, you got to make sure it's dry before you go in there with color pencil. All right, so let me dry everything now. So I think that's dry. All right, I want to add a little bit of highlight back on there. I want to add, I want to go around the, I want to make those little circles around it a little bit more stark. Maybe a little extra doodly stuff. And then right in here, I do want a little bit more purple, I think. I want a little bit of just a little extra color and then a little bit of blend just to give her crown a little bit more color there all right liking it i think i want some more i'm going to put a little bit of uh squiggly lines and now right here where I added the paint now I can take my pencil and I can go over it see how that highlights you can't do that if there's no paint there see how that highlights that if there's no paint it you can't get that okay same thing I want to maybe a bright let's see if this yellow ochre will be right that's no, not be bright. I'll go ahead and do it with white too some white on there and then I can tone it back with some yellow if I need to. Maybe a, let me get a blue. Where's my light blue? Just a touch of in the black. Remember I went over this with black paint I'm going to give that a little bit of a highlight too. Just to make it look like it's shiny. Something like that. Okay, now, oh, one other thing. I think I want to put a little bit of, just a touch of blue right next to her pupa, uh, the highlight, just to give it a little bit more oomph. It probably won't show up on camera, but do you do, do you ever do crazy work? Like her and throw a beard on it? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I guess I've done that sometimes, but not most of the time I don't. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of squiggle just to keep that color book squiggly line feel to her there you know something like that let's back up beep 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 <laughs> all right let's 
focus her back in. Let me get my uh, lucky dog. Let's get lucky dog back. So there we go. I like her. What do y'all think? Just a little bit of mixed media. Hey, Iffy. Yes, I'm going to show the book again. All right, for those y'all just coming in, wait, I do need my, I need an olive green pencil real quick. I want to do a little bit of shadow right there on those little shoulders. Yeah, here we go. I just want a little bit more green, kind of on the shadow on those shoulders there, just a little. So, the book that we've been working in for the last hour, oh gosh, it's going on two hours. I'll have to go is the new coloring studio the new somerset studio coloring studio this is their second one i got it this morning and i showed already the pages that in the back they ha they have our fave pinterest and they pinned two of mine from color book one here's color book one and they showed um let me find it this one this is one I colored, and this is, we did drips again. This one right here, and then the other one from um, this one, we had taken the girl face out of the color book and made a poster oh, without, the, without the stencil. <laughs> so this was the other one that they used the picture from, although it's not just the color book, it's the whole, it's a whole poster, right? So, yeah, I did a full flip through. Now, I did not read the articles. You'll have to buy it to read all the articles or sit in the bookstore and read it or whatever. But uh, I did do a flip through. And, uh, yeah, so this is what we did. I'm trying to get it flattened out again. And it does curl a little when you get it wet. It doesn't bother me. It'll flatten out, especially if you do something on the back. I, will pa I, I end up tearing them out and either putting them in my uh, sleeves you know, putting them in the big uh, idea notebook with the color book section. Um, but it doesn't bother me to have a little bit of wrinkle. It just doesn't. But if it does you, then you got to limit the amount of water. See all that water dripping I did? That's going to add a, quite a bit of water. So you got to be aware of that. So it does, you know, it does. See, so you can see a little bit. Of, there you go. See how it wrinkles a little bit? But okay guys i hope y'all enjoyed that thanks everybody for being here i will post it on twitter in a few minutes take a picture of it and upload on twitter and link to color book studio somerset color what do they completely call it the somerset studio coloring studio and that's their hashtag or their at twitter is coloring i think it's underscore or dash coloring studio i'll tweet it in a minute and you'll see it so all right, guys, well, I hope you have a good weekend. Yeah, Hubster will be coming flying in here shortly. I'm glad I got to do this for you guys, so be looking for that. All right, guys, see you later. Bye.